So I'm going to
So if you could please uh, mute your phones. And otherwise, I'm happy to uh, introduce uh, Ondra Žiška, uh, who is recently spending his, uh, most of his time uh, um, in programming tools for migrating applications and uh, application servers as well. <clears throat> and that's the topic of his talk. So hello. Sorry for initial technical troubles. I wasn't able to make it display. Uh, and excuse me for my weak voice because I'm a bit ill. I would like to present you WindUp, uh, which is a migration assistant uh, by JBoss. It's a project which started about three years ago uh, when uh, some consultant want, uh, wanted to automate his uh, tasks when he comes to a client and needs to analyze the application right away. Uh, but why should WindUp uh, be interesting also for you? So what is WindUp? WindUp is a mig migration assistant which is pluggable, modular, based on Forge, rule-driven, and that's just a few basic characteristics. I will introduce you each one. Excuse me, I need to put my phone out of the microphone, I guess. Right. <clears throat> so wind up as a migration assistant, what it does. Imagine that you have, a, let's say, an eShop and you run it on a server. So you have your application on your server. But your server is relatively expensive because of licensing, because of hardware, because of uh, uh, any other additional costs. Or you run on a really obsolete technology. So in that case, it costs you as well because you need to maintain it, you need to keep someone who understands the ancient technology. So you want to migrate, probably, and you consider migrating to a new shiny brand new server which happens to be JBoss, of course. And so what to do with that? You take your application and you try to deploy it. And usually you end up with this, with the deployment exception. So you go into the source code and look what's wrong. But what if your application looks like this? It isn't just one war or it isn't just one uh, bundle, it's several or like this, or this, or this. In that case, you are not probably going to use the same approach, opening ID and going through every one of them uh, when you consider the migration, whether to do it or not. And this is how the application may look like inside. So it's really a kind of chaos, and it may not be documented sometimes because the application can be 20 years old. And sometimes, even imagine that in situation like this, some of the applications don't have the source code at all. You don't have the source code and uh, the people who made it are, let's say, unavailable. So what would you do in that case? You would call WindUp. You would download WindUp and try it with WindUp. WindUp is a tool which is exactly for this situation. You will run WindUp against your, let's say, uh, ear, which is a, in Java it means a bunch of applications uh, somehow interconnected. And uh, after it runs for several, in this case, hours, because it's quite complicated tasks, it comes up with a report. This is just one of the pages of the report, but it basically shows you some summarization, some statistics, some nice graphs, and then the details. I will show you what it produces later. Now let's go to the demo. So WindUp is a console application. So 
WindUp is, an, uh, is a, a CLI application, a console application, so currently this is DAS. Yeah, sure, sorry. I will try to make it with... Right. So uh, WindUp is a CLI application, console application, so this is the only UI, uh, UI currently we have. There was also graphical UI, but uh, we uh, dumped it for a while uh, because it wasn't much used. It's, after all, used by uh, developers and administrators. And the main output isn't uh, graphical in terms of UI, it's graphical in terms of the report. So uh, after scanning some of these, uh, some of these parameters, you know that you are going to use mainly the input one. Here I have the application that I want to uh, migrate. I will show you what's inside. I, unfortunately, I cannot make it much bigger, but you can see that uh, it's a normal year which contains one web application and some library and several files we use mainly for testing. But still there is some uh, useful code uh, which emulates how a real application looks like. This is a tiny one, so we can make it run only for a few minutes or a few seconds, depends on your computer. But the principle is the same in, uh, in bigger applications where the year is, for example, I don't know, hundreds of megabytes big. So, I'm cheating a bit because I prepared the command here in advance. So let's look at the command. Uh -huh. You can see it. So the command is basically running wind up against an application which you have somewhere in your class, uh, in your file system. Uh, here is where you put the output and some uh, flags basically for uh, controlling whether to override the output. When you run it, wind up uh, unzips it, then it decompiles it, then it scans through the class files or, or decompiled Java files, then it scans the XML files, runs all the rules we have, because as I said, it's rule-based application, and I will show you what the rule-based means later. And uh, then it, every or majority of the rules uh, scan the Java aspects of the application. WindUp currently targets mainly Java application, Java EE applications, but uh, it's actually a customizable uh, tool and you can provide any rules you want. It doesn't have to be uh, targeted for Java. It can be targeted also for uh, .NET applications, for uh, C, I mean binary applications which were created by C. If you have a good enough decompiler, of course, that's one of the um, preconditions. And now it seems it's a bit stuck, which doesn't really happen always. It doesn't happen at all. But it usually, when it happens, it's during a demo. So I will try it again. Okay, I'm running from master, so this happens when you run a demonstration on a master application. Uh, master means the latest uh, development code. So apparently we found a bug. Uh, I can tell my colleague there that uh, we have to fix it. But I could... Oh, I see, I'm not on Wi-Fi, that's right, correct. 
Yeah, because of course, I, it should have struck my mind. Uh, it's validating XML files against its DTDs or, or against its schemas, which are defined as some online resources, so it's trying to download it. And because I'm on VPN still, but it doesn't connect, then there is a long timeout. So we would wait for about six minutes. All right, so offline. Is it offline mode like this? I think so, or offline, or just offline. That's what I wanted to show you afterwards, but it's our documentation. Oh, I'm not offline. I'm offline again here. Here it goes. All right, so this is the, re the result. So this is the final report of the application. Uh, so uh, the initial page currently isn't really nice because you only have uh, one application. Usually there is, uh, for each application you have run against, uh, you have one uh, record. So let's look at our one application. Here is some report index which tells you how many accidents you find or found, wind up found, or how many uh, issues you are going to see when you are, when you are going to migrate. How many, uh, what we are trying to do on this page is to tell you uh, how much effort you will need to put into migrating your application from one platform to another. In this case, uh, the first platform uh, is uh, WebLogic, and the target platform is uh, JBoss EAP6. So for this case, for this application, you would see several mandatory problems, several things that you have to fix, some uh, potential issues, uh, and several optional. Optional means like, for example, you, if you want to upgrade Hibernate, you don't have to, but you can. Then the report contains uh, a list of migration issues. This is a, a summarization. It's a statistics, sorry, you can see it again, so I will make it bigger for you. And you can see the level of effort, which uh, is uh, primarily uh, good for uh, assessing, again, uh, the uh, cost of the migration. For developers, the pages, the detailed pages are important, for example, we go uh, to the, down to the level of individual Java files. Uh, the main result for you as a developer is, uh, are these reports. Uh, from the index pages, you go to individual sources and you see the particular places where uh, the application has some issues. For example, here you can see that we are using the, uh, it goes to for this line, You are using uh, proprietary weblogic dot transaction dot transaction helper. I will make it bigger again. And you need to replace it with something standard because JBoss EAP sticks to the Java EE standards. So we encourage users to stick to the standards and, and uh, replace the APIs with not JBoss specific, but with the standard standardized Java EE APIs.
So windup is rule-based. What does that mean? We have uh, inside windup isn't just a bunch of scripts or uh, hard-coded Java code. It's a platform which runs rules, and the rules are not biased towards any particular technology. It's written, it's written in Java, but currently majority of the rules, especially the simple ones, look like this. You define a rule set, and in that rule set you have several rules, and the rules usually target a particular knowledge piece. By knowledge piece I mean that uh, you are an expert on some matter, like uh, uh, how to migrate uh, messaging API of WebLogic into messaging, uh, into Java messaging or uh, other uh, target technology. Most of the rules uh, catch appearance of particular, particular uh, Java constructs, which means imports, uh, constructors, calling of a method or, or some annotation. And uh, the result is a hint on that line in the sources. And windup then automatically creates all, that, all those statistics from it. The rules contain predefined conditions, uh, which, for example, can be Java queries, queries to the AST. As I told you, windup decompiles Java uh, classes, or you can also scan source code. In that case, you can uh, query the source, uh, Java sources for, for particular constructs, or you can scan XML files with uh, uh, XPath, but these are just those we uh, already implemented. You can implement any condition you like. Let's say you have a C project and you want to, or, or Ruby, and you want to scan your Ruby project. So what do you, what do you have to do is to uh, implement your own condition and then uh, implement a wrapper for XML, let's say, uh, for something to read the XML of your own choice uh, format, and uh, then you would use it in the when part. Instead of XML file, which matches some XPath, you would have your own uh, expression for matching Ruby constructs. Uh, then there are predefined operations. As I told, uh, typically an operation is putting a hint on a particular line in the source code, uh, and uh, it can be also XSLT transformation. It can also uh, be a call of CLI command to uh, JBoss EAP, which makes it uh, change its configuration. Or it can be a classification of a file. Let's say that you find a annotation of entity on some Java class, then you know that you uh, can classif classify it as an entity bean, in which case it appears again in the statistics and uh, it's on the EJB report, which is another special report page uh, of windup uh, report. Uh, of course, as I said, you can code your own custom conditions and operations, and in which case, uh, there is an API, Java API, ready for you, uh, which is uh, quite well documented nowadays, and we are uh, eagerly expecting your contributions, if you like. Uh, the rules, uh, we are looking for uh, some rule engine, uh, but none of them uh, matched our expectations or our needs, uh, especially nested iterations because, for example, the uh, rule engines, uh, which you probably know, uh, do not allow nested iterations, or sometimes iterations at all. They uh, target some different, uh, different f problems. They model processes. They don't model some uh, scripting engine. Uh, the rules also have metadata by which you can enable or disable. For example, you are a developer which only focuses on a JPA migration. So in that case, you only uh, enable those uh, JPA-related uh, tags. And you can, of course, write your own rules and contribute. <clears throat> Excuse me. Also, one of the extension ways of windup is that windup is based on a life cycle. Uh, if you uh, split the migration, the migration process into several parts, then you can, for example, identify that you have some 
uh, unzipping initial, then there is decompilation, then there is uh, scanning of the Java files, and in each of those uh, lifecycle phases, you can put uh, your own hook, let's say, and uh, which means the rule, and let it run right there. Uh, Windup is modular. It's based on JBoss Forge, or JBoss modules, uh, and it's pluggable. If you uh, want to, as I was talking about the Ruby integration, if you want to migrate your Ruby applications, you would do it as a new module. Simply, you don't need to uh, change the source code of the Windup core. You need to make your own module, uh, put your own custom conditions and uh, conditions and operations, and uh, wrap it into an add-on, which is basically a jar, and put it to Windup's uh, class path. And it, it will just load it, and if you, will, if you made it uh, well, then you will have your add-on available and your operations available in the XML rules. Windup is not just the application. Windup is kind of ecosystem or, or community. Uh, its primary, uh, or its initial, where it came from, was uh, JBoss consultants, which usually come to a site, and they don't have much time to go through an application uh, of size of thousands of uh, sub-applications. So they really need uh, some substantial information uh, in, in, let's say, a few minutes. Uh, so that's uh, where it started, but currently we are getting attention from uh, everyday users migrating their applications because migrating happens quite often, even between the versions. Uh, upgrading is also kind of migration. You take uh, your application which runs on an uh, older version of your server, and, or of your, of your let's say, uh, platform, and you want to upgrade uh, one or two major versions. So in this case, you don't want to go one by one, but you want to capture the uh, knowledge of one developer uh, into a rule and apply it on the rest of the application so the other developers can spot the highlights uh, without going through the code manually. Windup is also a migration knowledge base. Uh, we are building, uh, let's say, starting to build, uh, knowledge base uh, for migration specifically. If you go to windup.jables.com, uh, sorry, org, uh, you will see uh, a links uh, to currently, it's hosted by uh, Red Hat.com, a knowledge base site. Then uh, Windup is also the rules repository. Currently, it works as a, just simply as a, a GitHub repository. But uh, in the future, we are probably going to make it something smarter. Uh, so you can, uh, on one place, you could uh, write your own rules and test it right away. You could uh, put your uh, knowledge. Let's say you don't want to write the rule. You don't want to uh, put it give it too much time, but you want to just to make the, the, the idea not to die somewhere. So you write it in a formula form uh, and post it to our repository. And someone may pick it up and write the rule. How much time do I have? Plenty, OK. Uh, we also have a Eclipse IDE plugin. So you can imagine how it works. You open the project, run Windup, plugin, and it creates the quick fixes, or how is it called? So you can see right away in the IDE, you can say 15. Great. Thank you. Uh, you can run uh, the Windup plugin, and, it, uh, and the ED, uh, Eclipse IDE will show you the particular places w which are problematic and uh, show you the hint what to do with the particular line. And also, there is a Maven Windup plugin, uh, which you can use to run Windup regularly uh, as a part of Maven build. So, for example, if you, are, if you have a, a continuous integration uh, and you are in the process already of migrating the application, then you can rerun nightly and push the reports to your uh, management, and uh, they will see the progress. The next big step of Windup is 
uh, to make it a, a service. Uh, currently, as you saw, you run it as a uh, CLI application, as a command line application. But what would, what would be nice would be if it was on a server and you could upload your application, not necessarily to some public site, but to your own internal site or, or cloud, and WindUp would scan it. It would analyze the application uh, asynchronously. Uh, you would put it there uh, in the evening and come in the morning and see how far you have got. Uh, and second, uh, going through uh, an HTML uh, report, which uh, has uh, the size of several dozens of megabytes, isn't really neat. It's uh, it, basically it halts the browser sometimes. If we have some uh, not really well-behaving JavaScript, which you figure out, but uh, still uh, on a computers with lower memory, you can get into troubles. So what we want to do is to leverage the fact that WindUp is a backed by graph database and make it navigate you through the individual parts of the findings by clicking through it. So you could, for example, navigate by the individual applications, or you could be in a source and click through the uh, findings. You could find all the similar findings. Uh, you could uh, navigate uh, to, let's say, EJB and look where everywhere it is used and similar. It's similar to uh, the find usages in your favorite IDE. And uh, WindUp is also looking for anyone who can uh, help the community, who can join the community. Uh, you are welcome, especially if you are planning or already doing some kind of migration, in which case you certainly have some knowledge about what causes the uh, troubles. And we would like you to uh, put this information into the form, ideally into the form of rules, but also it can be just a text. You can send us an email, you can, send, you can file a JIRA, and uh, we will then cover it with a rule set, and your uh, platform will be covered for the next time you, you migrate it, or for the next time you migrate another application from the same platform to the same target platform. Uh, also, it would be great if you could share your applications. If you have any application which is shareable with public, if it's open source or anything, and it's uh, targeted for a particular platform, uh, especially non-JBOS, uh, and it uses its specific APIs, then we will be grateful if, if you shared the application with us, because uh, we would, of course, use it to extract the knowledge and see what are the points where, where, uh, where the problems arise for the particular platform. Uh, if you want to see more about WindUp, go to the project site. Uh, the primary site is windup.jbos.org, from which you can get to the documentation, to the GitHub site. Uh, you can see what you can do to contribute. There are uh, guides, uh, like the user guide or the uh, rule develop developer guide. And uh, for the developers, GitHub and how the core rules look like. I'm cur currently not connected, but if I manage to connect to uh, Wi-Fi, I will show you some more rules. And I, uh, now I have uh, some questions for you. Uh, we have met really big applications, so big that we were surprised uh, that an application can get so big. <laughs> uh, how many applications do you think was in the biggest uh, application, uh, I mean year or group of applications we have seen so far? No, it was not one. <laughs> it was not 25, it was uh, way more. Orders of magnitude. <laughs> thousand, who said thousand first? <laughs> okay. It's not, I think it was the guy in the back. So here's your scarf. Okay, put it to someone who said thousands. Uh, so, it is uh, over 1,000. It is about 1,200.
actually. And each of these application is uh, about megabytes of uh, class files. Now, uh, how many how many megabytes do you think that our current uh, report has? I said that we have pretty huge HTML reports. It's divided into several files. But if you run against this biggest application we have seen so far, how much, how large do you think that the biggest HTML file is, <laughs> which is the motivation for us to make it, uh, to make it uh, a service and a clickable web application? So how big do you think the biggest? Oh, not really, not that big. <laughs> a bit more. I think the closest match was the 20 megabytes. It is roughly 40 megabytes, or 45 maybe. Uh, so now I will try to connect to the Wi-Fi. Je to jeta ve finále. I see that some of you are already leaving, so thank you for your attention. And uh, who wants to stay for a few more details about wind up, or who want? to ask something. Yeah, we have about five minutes. So any questions so far? If you don't have a source code, how will WindUp help you? Well, WindUp doesn't really need the source code. Uh, the, it's quite common situation that the source code isn't available at the time the uh, anal analysis, analytic comes to the site. He only has the server. Uh, the running server or, or the deployments themselves. So you run against the deployments and wind up decompiles. We have internally we used two uh, decompilers. Original wind up, the ancient version used JET, but that wasn't really good for Java of the new versions of Java. It was good for Java 1.3. So currently we use Fernflower from uh, JetBrains, from IDEA, IDEA IDE, and then uh, the Procyon by Mark, Mike Storbel, which is kind of uh, reworked Eclipse decompiler. So you decompile uh, all the sources. Those which fail to decompile, that happens about 5% times, you try it with the other one. And we get almost 100% of decompiled files. And the results are pretty good. It's not the same as the source code of your application, of course, because the formatting, I mean, because similar uh, things. but. Uh, it gives you uh, really good results, including the annotations, including the generics. So it's really useful. So do I not decompile the code for me and provide to me, let's say, the class which should be changed? The question is, well, I will not repeat the question, uh, but restate uh, what WindUp uh, does in this situation. If you don't have uh, the source code, it decompiles and does exactly the same report as you see here. So it really gives you the hints uh, in particular lines, but it's not only uh, oriented towards source code. It's also oriented towards configuration, because in uh, the Java E applications, you can have uh, the descriptors. Like, you can have files which uh, in, let's say in JBoss uh, uh, application server 5 or EAP5, you had those uh, JBoss dash class loading dot XML. So that um, made the server to configure the class loading specifically for, uh, for this application. And it's not supported anymore in, in the newer versions. So you uh, either tell the user uh, that this is not supported anymore and point him to the documentation or uh, you can also make the XML, if, if we know how to do it, if there is some matching one-to-one -one and the logic is, uh, we can follow the logic, 
of, of the uh, original file, then we transform it using XSLT. And uh, similar, like there are some things that, which did, do not apply to certain uh, um, file or line, uh, like for example, if you use log4j, it's not recommended uh, to, for the enterprise to use log4j or, or solo4j, solo4j. Uh, so if we find this on class path, then uh, we report it in, in, the, or, uh, in the main report as well. And uh, the conditions or the constructs found can be more complicated, but it gets more complicated to explain. So if you are interested what you can do with windup, uh, then you are welcome to uh, come and have a look. But as I said, it's backed by a graph database, so we can, what we internally do in WindUp is that when scanning uh, the pieces of the applications, we put the information into the graph. And this is where the pluggability comes useful, because you, your plugin, can actually access the information which was extracted by the other plugins, by the other conditions and other, other discoveries discovering plugins. So you can see all the EJBs, you can see all the Hibernate entities, or sorry, uh, Java, JPA entities, you can see uh, all the Java files, you can see those which, uh, you can see also the findings, or um, the hints, uh, the problematic places already. You can see the annotations, and you can query the graph for whatever you want, and you get the result immediately. You don't have to scan yourself for, for these findings. You can go to the graph and got all, get all the uh, let's say uh, all the places where you use annotation X, Y, Z. So this is, this is how it's pluggable. Yes? Uh, you said that you find out this is made by a graph database. Yes. Uh, <coughs> Excuse me. It's uh, complicated. <laughs> uh, there is an API which is called Tinkerpop. And it has several implementations like Neo4j and ObjectDB. Uh, we are using, or we use uh, TitanDB. TitanDB, yes. And Tinkerpop is currently switching from uh, 2.x to 3.0, and it was donated to Apache. I recommend it to your attention because it's a very interesting project. And the TitanDB as well was donated, and uh, it has reached 1.0. And it's really a cool project to learn with. Uh, it's the question is it <laughs> yeah the question is whether windup supports uh, uh, configuration uh, server configuration migration it uh, doesn't uh, it depends because windup is a platform if you write rules for migrating the server uh, configuration then it supports it but currently we don't have many rules supporting it because uh, we started work on it, but for the JBoss uh, EE, uh, sorry, JBoss EAP uh, of the coming version, it was done uh, different way, uh, which is much lighter. I have to admit that WindUp has over 200 megabytes, so it's not something to distribute with a server which has uh, about 150 megabytes, just for migration. But you can download it separately, and uh, I think that uh, over the time there will some rules for server migration will appear. Definitely for, or my, I think that the rules for EAP upgrade will appear. If not by us, then by community. Thank you for the question. By the way, any more questions? We're out of time. Okay, we are out of time. Thank you for your attention.